This video is brought to you by the Deck of Many and Humblewood.net. Welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. I'm Theo, and today I have the second set of spell effects scheduled for release on February 12th, 2020. This is Hallister's Tumultuous Templates. Many thanks to WizKids for sending us this review set. You can see what else they sent us by clicking the eye in the corner of the screen. You can also refer to the eye to see our review of the other set of spell effects releasing alongside this one, Mighty Conjurations. These spell effects are a bit different though. These are spell templates. Generally, these are used to see the area of an effect that a spell will hit, and they're not necessarily designed to stay on your battle map indefinitely. These are designed to be used on a standard D&D battle map where, one, uh, where a one inch square represents five square feet of space. Each one represents a particular spell, but since some spells use a similar area of effect, they can be used for several different spells each. Let's take a closer look. Let's start with our circular templates. We have ones with a radius of 5 feet, 15 feet, and 20 feet. The Moonbeam spell calls down a silvery beam of pale light and a 5 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder. With this spell, you target a corner on your grid, so it affects a 2 by 2 section. The spell deals radiant damage and then has the possibility of knocking a shape-changed creature back to its original form. The beam sticks around for a minute with concentration and can be moved on subsequent turns. So, this spell effect will linger on your table as long as concentration is being maintained. Moonbeam is a second level druid spell. As we go through each of these templates, I'll mention other spells that they can be used for. Since there are a lot of official spells and more added all the time, the list will not be exhaustive. If you can think of other spells, please drop them in the comment section down below. This template can also be used with Purify Food and Drink, Snillix Snowball Swarm, and Watery Sphere. Our 15-foot radius sphere is represented by Spirit Guardians, a third level cleric spell. The cleric calls forth spirits to protect him or her out to a radius of 15 feet centered on the cleric. They can appear angelic, fey, or fiendish as the caster wishes. All three types are included in this box. The angelic ring features angels wielding swords. The fey ring has leaves and fairies. And the fiendish one has winged devils and flames. Interestingly, the fiendish circle is divided into four sections. This can be quite handy if you're trying to get a circle onto a busy battle map. You could potentially use these sections for other purposes too, such as a wall of flame. Spirit Guardians is another spell effect that can remain on the table, as it's a concentration spell that lasts for 10 minutes. When an enemy is inside the spell's area of effect, its speed is halved and it takes radiant damage. Other spells that use a 15-foot radius sphere are Darkness and Zone of Truth. I didn't realize this until I started researching this video, but the 20-foot radius sphere is pretty common in D&D. Of course, Fireball is one of the most popular spells in D&D. Other 20-foot sphere spells include Light, Calm Emotions, Sleep, Stinking Cloud, Cloud Kill, Fog Cloud, Silence, Synaptic Static, Hunger of Hadar, Incendiary Cloud, Spike Growth, Storm Sphere, Vitriolic Sphere, Ice Storm, and Insect Plague. Fireball is, of course, a third-level sorcerer or wizard spell that causes massive amounts of destruction within its radius. The ring's effects are a bit shorter than the other templates, but it's also the largest template in the set. Moving on to cones, or as some people call them, triangles. The 15-foot cone isn't used on a ton of spells, but Burning Hands and Color Spray are pretty popular. Other spells that use the 15-foot cone are Investiture of Ice and Dragon's Breath. The effect on this Burning Hands template is almost identical to the Fireball spell template, and the same height. Burning Hands is a first-level sorcerer or wizard spell that deals fire damage within its area of effect. The 30-foot cone isn't as popular as I thought it might be. The only other spell I came across that uses it is Psionic Blast. The effect on this template is pretty impressive, though. Its patterning forms a variety of scary faces, skulls, and masks, which is fitting for this third-level bard, warlock, sorcerer, or wizard spell that causes each creature within its area of effect to see its worst fears and become frightened, dropping whatever it's holding and running away. If this were cast on me, I'd probably see those old pegs I used to use to hold up the flying minis. And now on to our last shape of the evening, the cube. 
The 20-foot cube is represented by two different square templates. First, we have this green one representing Fairy Fire, a very useful first-level bard, druid, or artificer spell that causes creatures in its area of effect who fail the dexterity saving throw to glow, granting advantage to anyone attacking them. The glowing creature effect of the spell lingers with concentration, but the template is only used at casting. While the color is certainly different, the mold here for the Fairy Fire template is also different from the Fireball and Burning Hands templates, in case you were wondering. Next, we have the web template. The first and most important thing you should know is that it's very hard to see the web template and the plastic of the packaging, so be sure you don't accidentally throw it out. The web effect on the template is simple but effective. Web is a second level wizard, sorcerer, or artificer spell that lays down a bunch of webbing between two anchor points or on a flat surface. It lightly obscures the area and makes it hard to move through, sometimes even restraining creatures. The webbing remains for up to an hour with concentration, so you can leave this template on the map too. The 20 foot cube template can also be used with the spells Entangle, Evard's Black Tentacles, Erupting Earth, and even Major Image. Our last template is this very pretty purple 30-foot cube representing the spell Hypnotic Pattern, a third-level bard, wizard, warlock, or sorcerer spell. The pattern of lights stays on the field for just an instant, but any creatures inside its area of effect who fail the wisdom saving throw become hypnotized, or, in game parlance, charmed and incapacitated for up to a minute with concentration. Creatures get knocked out of the effect if you hurt them or just shake them a bit. The spell template can also be used for the spells Create or Destroy Water, Program Delusion, and Abby Dalsam's Horrid Wilting. There are a lot of options for spell templates out there, but most of them are themeless bits of clear plastic or similar. These templates, which are evocative of the spells they represent, should be a fun addition to your encounters. I was a bit flummoxed that we got multiples of certain shapes and sizes, while other seemingly popular spell shapes weren't included, Though when I did some research, it seemed like the ones that would have been the most helpful were also larger than anything included here. We could have used a 30-foot sphere for Detect Magic, Detect Good and Evil, the Mini Aura spells, and Circle of Power, among others. And a 60-foot cone would have been useful for Cone of Cold, Prismatic Spray, and Sunbeam. But those would have been pretty enormous templates, and seemingly out of the scope for this particular product. Between this set and the Force Cages, Liaman's Tiny Hut, and the Flaming Sphere Mini we got in the Mighty Conjuration Spell Effects set that released alongside the Templates box, they really did cover most of their bases. You can use Liaman's Tiny Hut for your 10-foot sphere template, and the Force Cage box for your 10-foot cube, and then you have another 20-foot cube here with the cage. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised with this set. It fills a nice niche that many gamers may have in their mini collection and brings a lot of theme and color to your battle map. It seems that they put a lot of thought into which templates to include, and I think they make good choices. I imagine spellcasters will be happy to have even more visual and tactile feedback for their spells, and it should help speed along gameplay as your wizard can visually figure out the exact right placement for her meticulously placed fireball, at least alongside the horizontal plane. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. We again want to thank WizKids for sending us this early preview set, but it should be available at your friendly local game store by the time you see this. It retails for between $45 and $60 at the time of this recording. We also want to thank our sponsor for this video, the Deck of Mini. As you probably know, Humblewood is out now. If any of you have picked up a copy, drop me a comment down below to let me know what you think. I wanted to highlight one particular monster that's pretty dear to my heart today. This little fellow who resembles a rejected Muppet is a lesser demon. You see, sometimes you get someone who is new to the art of summoning, and they think they're just a little bit more skilled than they actually are. They settle down, draw some arcane symbols with their special chalk from that trendy new arcane shop down by the juice bar, and try to summon into being a Baylor or some other nasty fellow they can use to get revenge on that person who nearly ran them over with their horse-drawn cart at that harvest festival last month. But instead of getting a great hulking red beast, they end up with Elmo's less stable cousin here. While they can do some decent damage with their sharpened claws and teeth, it's really their foul odor that can do you in. That, or the total humiliation of seeing your ineptitude come to life in front of you.
See what other colorful creatures await you in this new campaign setting book for 5th edition D&D by visiting humblewood.net. Thanks for watching today. We have a new video every Monday here on YouTube. And since you stayed to the very end, I'll give you a special heads up. This coming Monday, we're planning to start a giveaway. So be sure to check back then to see how to enter. You can subscribe to see all our videos on your subscription page, and you can click the little bell icon to be notified when we drop a new video. When we receive early special sets like this, we try to get the video out as soon as possible, so it may launch in the middle of some random night instead of in our regular Monday morning slot. So enabling notifications will help ensure that you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin.